Good morning. Let's take a moment to acknowledge each other's presence, and thereby acknowledging also our loving God who invites us into this celebration as today we celebrate the feast of the conversion of St. Paul the Apostle. And to our loving Father, we bring each other's intentions and lift each other up in prayer. We also remember to pray for people in dire and destitute situations around the world, for families that are struggling, for people who continue to experience challenges, for those who continue to serve in the front lines, the first responders, and all those who dedicate their lives to the poor and needy. Yesterday, our servant, Megan, celebrated her double-digit birthday. So let's also remember to pray for her. And our entrance song is Christ in Me Arise. Christ in me arise and dispel all the darkness. Christ in me arise with your power and your strength. Christ in me pour out your blessing and healing. Christ in me arise and I will rise with you. Be now my vision, open these eyes, showing me all that I must see. Onward to the kingdom, you are the way. Arise in me and I shall rise with you. Christ in me, arise and dispel all the darkness. Christ in me, arise with your power and your strength. Christ in me, pour out your blessing and healing. Christ in me, arise and I shall rise with you. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you. Gathered around the sacred altar of God's loving sacrificial meal, we take a moment to open our hearts to his mercy and compassion. <clears throat> Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. You open our eyes, Christ eleison, Christ eleison. You are the salvation of the world, Kyrie eleison. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who taught the whole world through the preaching of the blessed Apostle Paul, 
Draw us, we pray, nearer to you, to the example of him whose conversion we celebrate today. And so make us witnesses to your truth in the world. To our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Saul, still breathing new murderous threats against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus, that if he should find any men or women who belonged to this way, he might bring them back to Jerusalem in chains. On his journey, as he was nearing Damascus, a light from the sky suddenly flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? He said, who are you, sir? The reply came, I am Jesus, whom you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men who were traveling with him stood speechless, for they heard the voice, but could not see no one. Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing. So they led him by the hand and brought him to Damascus. For three days, he was unable to see, and he neither ate nor drank. There was a disciple in Damascus named Ananias, and the Lord said to him in a vision, Ananias, he answered, here I am, Lord. The Lord said to him, get up and go to the street called Straight and ask at that house of Judas for a man from Tarsus named Saul. He is there praying, and in a vision he has seen a man named Ananias come in and lay his hands on him that he may regain his sight. But Ananias replied, Lord, I have heard from many sources about this man what evil things he has done to your holy ones in Jerusalem. And here, he has authority from the chief priest to imprison on all who call upon your name. But the Lord said to him, go for this man, for he is the chosen instrument of mine to carry my name before Gentiles, before kings, children of Israel. I will show him what he will have to suffer for my name. So Ananias went and entered the house. Laying his hands on him, he said, Saul, my brother, the Lord has sent me. Jesus, who appeared to you on the way by which you came, that you may regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Immediately, Things like scales fell from his eyes, and he regained his sight. He got up and was baptized. And when he had eaten, he recovered his strength. He stayed some days with the disciples in Damascus, and he began at once to proclaim Jesus in the synagogues, that he is the Son of God. All who heard him were astounded and said, is not this the man who in Jerusalem ravaged those who called upon this name and came here expressly to take them back into chains to the chief priests? Saul grew all that stronger and confounded to the Jews who lived in Damascus, proving that this is the Christ. The word of the Lord. Go to all the world and tell the good news. Praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, all you peoples. Go out to all the world. For steadfast is his kindness towards us. 
and the fidelity of the Lord endures forever. Go out to all the world and tell the good news. Alleluia. 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 I chose you from the world to go and bear fruit that will last, says the Lord. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus appeared to the eleven and said to them, Go into the whole world and proclaim the gospel to every creature. Whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. Whoever does not believe will be condemned. These signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will drive out demons. They will speak new languages. They will pick up serpents with their hands. And if they drink any deadly thing, it will not harm them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. The Gospel of the Lord. This morning we celebrate the conversion of Saint Ananias. Now wait a minute, you may say, wait a minute, didn't Father Thomas just say the conversion of Saint Paul? Well, there wouldn't have been a conversion of Saint Paul if there was not first a conversion of Ananias. And then we may say, but we heard that Ananias already was a believer. He already was a Christian. But in reality, Conversion is not just going from a state of unbelief to belief, but conversion is what each one of us is called to do, and that is to change our ways so we are more in line with the will of God. And that's what we heard St. Ananias do in today's first reading, change his ways to be more in the way of the will of God. Realize how difficult that must have been for Ananias. After all, he had heard what Saul of Tarsus was doing. Saul of Tarsus was coming not to be a friend, but to arrest people and take them back into chains, including arresting someone like Ananias. And we hear that in his conversation, in his prayer with God. Really? You want me to go to this man? I've heard what he's done in Jerusalem. Probably had heard that he was there at the stoning of St. Stephen. And yet, Ananias was faithful to Cod despite that difficult conversion. And yes, you and I are called to make conversions in our life, to bring our lives more closely in line with God. Many times a major roadblock to us making a conversion is we already think that we are extremely pious, that we already are doing the will of God. After all, if we think about um, Saul, he felt that he was absolutely doing God's will because he was bringing what he perceived to be and what the leaders in Jerusalem perceived to be, people who were outside the Jewish faith, trying to convert them, trying to stop their negative influence on others. So Paul, Saul was doing God's will in his mind. Ananias, as he was living his life in Damascus, 
He was doing what he felt was God's will, praying constantly, being in close contact. And it's easy for us to look at our devotion, our piety, and say, well, I'm already doing God's will. I don't need a conversion. But we see the importance, the difficulties that they had in order to make that conversion. In the case of St. Ananias, he had to forgive. And how difficult it is many times to forgive others for what they've done. How, how difficult it would be for him to forgive Saul for the persecutions that he had already brought about. And how difficult it is it for us sometimes to forgive the harm and the difficulties that others have inflicted upon us. In the case of Saul, he had to forgive himself. In order for him to accept the conversion and the call to, to change his life, he'd have to admit that the mistakes he made, even watching the death of someone like St. Stephen, and all the other murderous threats that he had performed, he had to admit that those were mistakes and he had to accept God's forgiveness. You see, in many ways, conversion is very much about that forgiveness, forgiving ourselves and forgiving others. This weekend, um, most of us received a scriptural card with a scripture to pray on, to open ourselves up to the gift of the Holy Spirit. And as we continue this week to reflect upon and pray on that scriptural message, may we include in our prayer, Lord, what in my life, where in my life do I need conversion? What are you calling me to do different, to be more in line with your will? And with that call, we then can fulfill the message of the gospel to go out to the whole world proclaiming that good news. Saint Ananias of Damascus, pray for us. Saul of Tarsus, who we now know as Saint Paul the Apostle, Pray for us. Let us pray for the mission of the church and the needs of the world redeemed by Christ. Our response. Be gracious to your people, Lord. Be gracious to your people, Lord. That the Pope, bishops, and priests may be zealous in preaching repentance and conversion. Let us pray to the Lord. Be gracious to your people, Lord. That missionaries may have the courage to proclaim the gospel, even in difficult places and circumstances. Let us pray to the Lord. Be gracious to your people, Lord. That those who are in doubt or despair may discover the eternal truth, which is Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Be gracious to your people, Lord. That the elderly, the lonely, and the sick may receive the comfort of God's love in their distress. Let us pray to the Lord. Be gracious to your people, Lord that the faithful departed may be forgiven of their sins and encounter God in the kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Be gracious to your people, Lord. We lift up to the Lord the intentions and petitions we hold dear in our hearts for our families and our loved ones. We pray for the eternal repose of the soul of Ahmed Nakpil and the intentions of David Duran and Megan de Ragos, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. Be gracious to your people, Lord. And for the intentions that have been submitted to us in thanksgiving for Roy de la Cruz 
and for the health, strength, and comfort needed by Frank Lopez, Ian Tennant, Pope, the Pope Joy family, Ivan and Giancarlo Aguilar, and the Familia Cifuentes. We pray to the Lord. Be gracious to your people, Lord. And for our dearly departed, A.N., Charito Castillo, Consortia Magno, Claire Pope Joy, Ging Espiritu, and Ishmael Valenzuela. And for the intentions we have placed in the Ark of Prayer chest, we pray to the Lord. Be gracious to your people, Lord. Father of our Redeemer, as we write our prayers with the intercession of St. Paul, deepen the grace of conversion in our lives. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Bless the Lord, God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Bless the Lord, God of all creation, for to your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we celebrate the divine mysteries, O Lord, we pray, may the Spirit fill us with that light of faith with which he constantly enlightened the blessed Apostle Paul for the spreading of your glory through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you, eternal shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Sanctus, Sanctus, Sanctus Dominus Deus Sabaoth, Plenisum Celi et Terra, Gloria Tua, Hosanna in excelsis, Benedictus, qui venit in nomine Domini, O Sahana in excelsis. 
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, this case we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy, Thomas, and Todd, his brother, bishops, all the bishops, priests, deacons, religious, and all your faithful people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, Santiago de Compostela, Saint Paul, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you to your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and he in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin 
and saved from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, miserere nobis. Agnus Dei, qui tolis peccata mundi, dona nobis pacem. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Communion Antiphon. I live by faith in the Son of God, who has loved me and given himself up for me. And to our sisters and brothers who are worshiping with us online and those who are homebound and those unable to receive our Lord Jesus sacramentally, we join in prayer. My Jesus, I believe that you're present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Let us pray. May the sacrament we have received, O Lord our God, stir up in us that fire of charity with which the blessed Apostle Paul burned ardently as he bore his concern for all the churches through Christ our Lord. We now pray to our loving Mother, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And to Saint Joseph, Hail, Guardian of the Redeemer, Spouse of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to you God entrusted his only Son, in you Mary place her trust, with you Christ was secure and safe. Blessed Joseph, to us too, show yourself a Father, and guide us to the path of life. Obtain for us grace, mercy, and courage, and defend us from every evil. Amen. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. And may God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast unto hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you all and your loved ones, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our recessional song is Go Out, Go Out. Go out, go out to all the world and tell the good news. Tell the good, good news. Go out, go out to all the world and tell the good news. Tell the good, good news. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, all you nations. Glorify him, glorify him, all you peoples. Go out, go out to all the world and tell the good news, tell the good, good news. Go out, go out to all the world and tell the good news. Tell the good, good news. Have a blessed day, everyone.